Hello everyone and welcome to another video on Fire the Spirit's YouTube video channel. I am Nick John and today we're going to do a book review on a book called Les Miserables. Les Miserables starts off with a character by the name of Jean Valjean. Jean Valjean is an ex-convict and cannot find work or a place to stay. He eventually is taken in out of the kindness of a bishop and spends the night there. But during the night, Jean Valjean cannot resist the temptation to steal from the bishop and steals some candlesticks. Some local policemen patrolling the area catch Jean Valjean with this and apprehend him and therefore bring him back to the bishop thinking he had stolen it. The bishop, seeing the situation, gives Jean Valjean another candlestick that completes the set and tells the policeman that he had given the candlesticks to Jean Valjean. The policeman reluctantly let Jean Valjean go because they do not believe the bishop's story, but they have no proof otherwise, so they have to let Jean Valjean go. Jean Valjean is totally shocked by what the bishop had done. The bishop's action changes Jean Valjean's life forever. Jean Valjean moves on during life and later becomes the mayor of an insignificant town who is more poor than many of its other neighboring towns. With the growing of years throughout the book, Jean Valjean becomes the mayor of the insignificant town and a highly respected person. As mayor, he changes the town totally. He sets up factories for women to work so they do not have to become prostitutes, and he increases the town's economy through its manufacturing and exportation of little black, uh, black glass trinkets. Then steps in another character by the name of Javert. Javert is a police officer who has always kept an eye out for Jean Valjean due to a petty theft that he committed many years ago. Javert becomes very suspicious of this man who is called Monsieur Madeleine, who Jean Valjean took as the name to replace his old name, Jean Valjean, and thinks that it is, and rightly thinks that it is Jean Valjean. When he gets too hot on Jean Valjean's heels, though, Jean Valjean has to leave town and all the establishments that he has made and the town's all his good efforts that he has made for this town. It's during this time that Jean Valjean picks up a girl and adopts her by the name of Cosette. He loves Cosette and treats her like a daughter even though he has no relation to her whatsoever. She actually was the daughter of one of his workers whom he had taken a particular interest in. The story then unfolds for many years of Jean Valjean moving with Cosette to somewhere and Javert, uh, losing track of Jean Valjean and then catching up with him again and getting too hot and then uh, Jean Valjean has to move again so Javert does not catch up to him. Uh, interestingly, one of these places uh, happens to be a convent where Jean Valjean works as a gardener and Cosette is put through the nun's boarding school. The book Les Miserables ends with Jean Valjean's death after his reconciliation with his son-in-law, whose name is Marius. Now, their conflict had ensued over Marius not understanding how Jean Valjean, who lived simply, had gotten so much money for Cosette's dowry, and how he had given that money to Marius. Marius had thought that Jean Valjean had stolen the money and therefore did not want to touch it and treated Jean Valjean as a criminal. Uh, as it happens is what really that money came from was Jean Valjean had, uh, had saved up as mayor and had put this in banks and that was where the money came from. He had just given all his money to his son-in-law, Marius. The author of the book Les Miserables, Victor Hugo, has his characters very well portrayed. And it's worth noting 
the characteristics of at least the main characters in Les Miserables. To start with, Jean Valjean. If I could describe Jean Valjean in one word, it would be a saint. Uh, after his, Jean Valjean's encounter with the bishop, Jean Valjean just becomes saintly. He has a generous, merciful heart. He is compassionate to people. And he also has an interesting characteristic of a well-formed conscience. And a, this well-formed conscience rules his life. So he is not ruled by emotions, he is ruled by reason. Another character to look at is Javert. Javert, as we know, is the policeman, and if I could describe him in one word, uh, probably unrelenting. Javert is one of those people who follows the letter of the law, and not the spirit of the law. This following of the letter of the law is something that causes many hardships in other people's lives because Javert has no mercy. He crosses every T and dots every I of the law. If you break something, then you have to pay for it or you have to go to prison no matter what. And that just causes a lot of hardships that you see throughout the book in Les Miserables. Another person to look at, although his length that the book talks about him is very, very short, is the bishop. And the bishop, you can just classify as holy if, in one word. He lives an austere life and has a generous heart. It is his influence, although very brief in the book, it totally changes the whole book and Jean Valjean's life forever. Another character to look at is Cosette. Cosette, if I were to describe her in one word, I would have to use probably the word innocent. She's a naive uh, little girl and her virtue that she has is her joy that she brings to other people. Uh, wherever she goes, uh, this joy just animates from her and it just makes that atmosphere just more joyful. Uh, this is particularly shown in Jean Valjean when he is in, com in company with her, how he, his life and his heart is not so heavy with the burdens of his life and his past. Another person to look at is Marius. Now, Marius is an interesting character. He is ruled by emotions and not by reason. Therefore, he does not do the right thing because it is right. He is ruled by his emotions, so he's not ruled by reason. But to his credit, he does have honor that he lives up to, and he also stands by his beliefs, no matter the cost. And though his beliefs may be ruled by emotions, he still stands by them and will not back down. And that, to his credit, is very admirable. Before we wrap this up, there's one thing that I should mention about the book itself. There's the abridged version, and then there's the unabridged version. For most of you, I would probably suggest the abridged version. The abridged version is about 800 pages long, and it's a lot faster to read. I was read the unabridged version, and that's more like 1,500 pages long. And unless you want to know minute details about history and how stuff was made, like for example, how the sewers came to be, I mean like, why do you want to know that? It has no pertaining to the book, but Victor Hugo has digresses into these side topics that have no meaning to the book. But if you do like these random facts and how things were created, then definitely do not get the unabridged version. But for most of us, probably the abridged version is better. Uh, personally, like I said, I read the abridged version, or the unabridged version. If I were to read it again, I would probably read the unabridged version because it was very boring in parts uh, due to historical stuff that, first off, I didn't know so well, and just other random facts that had no pertaining to the story, and it just helped, it just made me lose track of what was going on in the book. Well, thank you for joining me, and be sure to subscribe below if you have not. Check out Fire the Spirit's webpage. Uh, also, check out our, the Google Plus page, All Things Catholic and check out Twitter and Facebook that Fire of Spirit also has. Thank you for watching, God bless, and stay in tune for next time.